you're gonna see that temperature just drop. And I'm not spinning that many RPMs. I'm only spinning about a thousand RPM. So it's been a while since I last released a video. So I figured I would do a quick update on the cooling system of my Discovery 2. Just uh, going over a few modifications I've made that have been really good. So first and foremost, I mentioned that last video, the inline uh, thermostat modification by, I believe it's Extinct. Maybe I'm wrong. At any rate, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Um, this makes a huge difference. This made the biggest difference of anything that I've done to the cooling system. And you can see kind of how it works there. And then down below here, down in there is, is like a bypass. Works really, really well. And it's just a standard thermostat, which is nice too, in case you have to replace it. They're easy to come by. The other modification I made is I put on my, I had this laying around. I just, I never put it on my uh, aluminum expansion tank by Cars 4x4. I put a different cap on it because it comes with a 16 PSI cap. And I found that that thing leaked because this is a 20 PSI system. Not sure why they include a 16 PSI cap, but putting the 20 PSI cap on, no more problems with the dribbling coolant everywhere. And it works really well. And the other thing I did is I put on a Chevy Blazer fan here and a uh, I believe it's a Chevy Blazer a General Motors fan clutch as well and I had to trim these fan blades uh, a quarter of an inch each which was kind of a pain but I just did it with a grinder and it was it was no big deal I would say the fan and fan clutch combo was worth about two degrees shaved off my normal temperatures and then you can't really see it but down in there is a flow cooler water pump the flow cooler water pumps are really really nice looking well built pieces of uh pieces of equipment and they're designed to push more water at lower rpms from my understanding so yeah that flow cooler i would say was worth about another two maybe three degrees so the combination of all of those things so you know my radiator is fairly new the inline thermostat mod the new fan and clutch mod and the flow cooler radiator those all combined together drop my temperatures i'm thinking I, I feel like six to ten degrees is what i would say and this thing it'll hold its temperature longer it doesn't fluctuate as quickly which is nice. Um, it's not, you're not constantly going up and down, up and down in the temperature. And then this, this doesn't really make it run any cooler, but what it does do is prevents, you know, that, that plastic expansion tank from cracking. Cause if that thing cracks and it eventually will, it's going to spew out all your coolant and then you're going to overheat. So that's going to be a problem. So I like having this just a little uh, extra insurance. It's got a little sight glass down here too. So yeah, those are the changes I've made and I don't think I could do much more to make this thing run any cooler than it does now and I'm very happy with it. Uh, yeah, just running around town, I'm looking at 188 to 195 degrees sitting in traffic. I might get up to 203, 204 and we're talking 100 plus degree ambient uh, temperatures here. So yeah, it's doing really well. And this thing just hit 91,000 miles and uh, it's got factory head gaskets. So I've always thought that the head gasket issue with these Discovery 2s is related to the, uh, the fact that they run hotter than they should, you know, from the factory. So I think, uh, I think head gaskets really, by and large, have, to, have something to do with the, uh, the, the engine temperature overheating and then that causes the uh, the head gaskets to leak because I'm at 91,000 I have no oil leaks I have no head gasket leaks so hoping to, that that trend continues and we'll see if my theory is correct as time goes on 
So I just got done driving about five miles and we're looking at 188.6, which is pretty solid. I do not have the AC on though, because I broke my AC. But as you can see, look at the ambient temperature here. Read 98 degrees, which is not actually hot here. That's 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 not even hot, but you know, 188, not bad. Sitting here idling in the heat after a five mile drive, pretty solid, looking pretty solid. I think I found the limit of my suspension travel. That's pretty cool. It's a great way to test brake lines and check everything, see if everything's working right. I'm liking the front end stuff on here. Obviously I've got my sway bars disconnected. Part of the reason why my AC doesn't work, interestingly. 